On the 20th of February 2023, President Joe Biden pulled off a surprise trip to Ukraine, a zone of active conflict. The visit was kept under wraps to such an extent that only a handful of individuals were privy to it, and even the Russians got wind of it just a few hours before Biden's arrival. You might be wondering, how on earth did they manage to keep the president's movements hush-hush, especially in an age where every presidential step is usually accompanied by a parade of motorcades and a fleet of Air Force One jets? Well, the answer lies in the intricate web of covert transportation methods employed by the U.S. government. The Boeing C-32A, a stealthier version of the Boeing 747-200B used as the president's main plane, discreetly whisked Biden away with its advanced security features and state-of-the-art communication systems. Often overshadowed by its more famous counterpart, this military variant of the Boeing 757-200 extended-range aircraft plays a vital role in keeping a low profile while ensuring the president's safety. Dubbed Air Force Two, or the C-32A is a multitasking marvel. Its main job involves shuttling the vice president, their family, and staff around, earning its nickname as the vice president's preferred mode of travel. Additionally, the aircraft, serving the special air mission, caters to executive transport needs and provides extensive communication capabilities for senior political officials. But what's most intriguing is that the C-32A steps in for Air Force One when there are logistical constraints or a need for heightened discretion. President Biden himself opted for this option during his journey to Ukraine in February 2023, strategically avoiding suspicion by choosing the C-32A. But it's not just about secret flights. There are also the doomsday planes, tasked with ensuring leadership continuity in case of nuclear war or large-scale conflicts. Officially known as National Airborne Operations Centers, NAOC, these airborne command posts serve as a crucial link between leaders and the ability to coordinate military operations from the sky. These airborne command posts have been operational since the 1970s, evolving into flying war rooms designed to guide the president through the tumultuous early days of a nuclear war. One notable doomsday plane is the Boeing E-4B, a modified version of the Boeing 747-200B, also known as Nightwatch. This advanced airborne command post ensures the survivability of the National Command Authority, comprising the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and their successors. Another doomsday plane is the Boeing E-6 Mercury, originally known as E-6 Hermes. Based on the Boeing 707-320, this airborne command post and communications relay entered service with the United States Navy in 1989, operating under the mission name and acronym TACAMO, which stands for Take Charge and Move Out. There's also the Northrop Grumman E-10MC-2A, envisioned as a multi-role military aircraft designed to replace several existing platforms based on the Boeing 767-400ER. Its aim is to serve as the central command authority for air, land, and sea forces in a combat theater, demonstrating the continuous evolution of technology in this crucial domain. Each of these doomsday planes is equipped with advanced communication tools to ensure connectivity in various scenarios. These include very low-frequency antennas capable of trailing up to 5 miles behind the aircraft during flight and super-high-frequency and Milstar communications equipment housed on top of the distinctive dome or bulge in the fuselage. The Milstar system, according to the United States Space Force, is a secure and jam-resistant joint service satellite communication system that facilitates worldwide communication, linking command authorities with military resources like ships, submarines, aircraft, and ground stations, meeting high-priority military requirements. These technologies enable the doomsday planes to communicate with armed units globally, covering a wide spectrum of communication levels from open to private. While specific details about the plane's resistance to nuclear attacks are classified, it is known that the onboard computers and wiring are hardened with thermal and nuclear shielding. The cockpit features analog controls, and workstations are equipped with hand-wired phones and monitors designed to operate even in the event of a nuclear electromagnetic pulse to protect the communication system from external factors like heat or an electromagnetic pulse. There are no windows in the aircraft besides the ones in the cockpit. Additionally, the aircraft can be refueled mid-flight during wartime, optimizing flying time except for necessary crew supply. While the U.S. Air Force is in charge of operating and maintaining the doomsday planes, as well as other means of presidential air travel, it hasn't always been this way. The U.S. Army once took charge of managing the president's travel, especially during the tumultuous times of the Second World War. 
This pivotal responsibility continued until 1976, with an interesting collaboration between the Army and the Marine Corps for helicopter transportation. Apart from the Air Force and the Army, the U.S. Navy is also not left out in the duty of transporting the President safely and securely. The distinctive call sign, Navy 1A, reflects a unique moment in history when it was assigned to a Lockheed S-3 Viking, serial number 159387, to be exact, operated by the Blue Wolves of VS-35. This aircraft made history on May 1, 2003, when it carried President George W. Bush to the USS Abraham Lincoln off the coast of San Diego, California. Commander John Escipa Lucier, the executive officer of VS-35, piloted the S-3 with Lieutenant Ryan Wilson Phillips as the flight officer. After the significant mission, the retired S-3 found its final resting place on display at the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. While Navy 1A holds a singular place in history, it's part of a broader tradition of unique call signs associated with presidential travel. The iconic Air Force One serves as the official air traffic control designation for any United States Air Force aircraft carrying the president. Beyond aviation, the United States Secret Service employs code names for U.S. presidents, first ladies, and other prominent figures and locations. Initially used for security purposes when electronic communications were not routinely encrypted, these names now serve the dual purpose of brevity and tradition. President John F. Kennedy, for example, was known by the code name a Lancer, while First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy's code name was a Lace. The evolution of this transportation landscape introduces us to the specialized operations and agencies working seamlessly to ensure the safety and efficiency of the president's movements. One key player is the Secret Service, a civilian agency with the crucial task of operating the president's motorcade. The iconic presidential state car, known as a Cadillac One or the Beast, is under the meticulous care of the Secret Service. Boasting a fleet of at least 10 of these specially designed limousines, the responsibilities of the Secret Service extend beyond vehicular operations. This civilian agency is entrusted with the task of protecting the president and his family, including adult children, during their travels. To accomplish this mission effectively, the Secret Service can call upon the assistance of other agencies, forging partnerships with the Department of Defense and the Coast Guard. Behind the scenes, meticulous reporting is an integral part of the process. Both the Secret Service and the Department of Defense diligently prepare and submit expenditure reports to Congress, providing transparency and accountability in the costs associated with presidential travel. The president does not only travel secretly by air. Sometimes, he happens to move on the ground as well. With very few people in the know, securing the president's ground travel is a delicate balance between visibility and secrecy. With the motorcade being a conspicuous yet necessary element of the president's movements, however, in situations demanding heightened discretion, the government employs various strategies to ensure land travel remains as covert as possible. The presidential bus, known as a Ground Force One, O is a symbol of this balance, embodying the president's ground travel capabilities while offering a discreet and secure mode of transportation. This specialized vehicle plays a pivotal role in ensuring the president's safety during overland journeys. Outfitted with state-of-the-art communication systems and defense measures, the presidential bus represents the fusion of functionality and security. The design prioritizes both mobility and the imperative need to shield the president from potential threats on the road. Specific events underscore the importance of the presidential bus in ensuring the president's safety during ground travel. For instance, in August 2011, the Secret Service introduced a Ground One as a new permanent addition to the federal government's fleet, initially for use by Barack Obama in the campaign leading up to the 2012 presidential election. With all of the resources that go into moving the president secretly, the question that comes to mind is why? Why does the president need to sometimes move around secretly? The planning of secret government travel, especially for the president, is a meticulous and complex process. The decision to keep these plans secret stems from the core objective of ensuring the safety of high-profile officials, particularly when venturing into areas that could pose potential security risks. Presidential visits to active combat zones, a practice dating back to Abraham Lincoln, underscore the historical importance of secrecy. In most cases, these visits are executed without any prior public announcement emphasizing the critical nature of maintaining confidentiality. For visits with heightened security needs, the Secret Service is involved right from the beginning of the planning phase. This early engagement is essential to address and incorporate the unique security challenges associated with each visit. 
One key aspect of the planning process revolves around determining the safest and most efficient route for the president's travel. This involves careful consideration of factors such as potential security threats, logistical challenges, and diplomatic sensitivities. The goal is to chart a course that minimizes risks and ensures a smooth and secure journey. While the specific details of the travel plans are kept under wraps, it is not uncommon for individuals involved in the planning to undergo a stringent security clearance process. This includes reporting international travel, obtaining pre-approval, disclosing travel schedules to security officers, and attending pre-travel security briefings. These measures contribute to the overall security framework, ensuring that all aspects of the journey are scrutinized and safeguarded. While there have been speculations about the use of unconventional means, such as unmarked and hidden vehicles for transporting the president, it remains unconfirmed that the government employs a garbage truck for such purposes. Nonetheless, it exemplifies the extent to which the government goes to maintain secrecy and security in the execution of high-stakes travel plans. If you enjoyed our video, join our membership, Paper Pilot Club, to support us. You'll get monthly custom paper airplane designs, early access to our videos, and exclusive member badges to stand out in the comments. Click a join now and be a part of the adventure today.